$60 a person to go to Maho Beach? I don't think so. Do you have an upcoming cruise to St. Martin? You want to go to the famous Maho Beach where you get to see those planes landing all over you that you've seen on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook on that beautiful beach? Well, don't pay $60 a person for the excursion. I'm going to tell you the best way to get there and how to get back for way, way less. All right, so you're at the port. What now? You're going to get off the ship. It's a very easy walk. Walk straight to one of the little water taxi huts, okay? That's the first pro tip is we're going to take the water taxi. You go to the water taxi huts. There's two right there in the port. It's a very easy, short walk, very level, nice and graded. No issues there at all. You're going to go up to the thing and you got to pay the lady. It's $7 a person, but it's a round trip water taxi to downtown, not to Mayo Beach or Maho Beach to downtown. Then you're going to walk down past Diamonds International and you're going to head to the docks for the water taxi and you'll simply take a water taxi. And they have a few different shaped boats, but it doesn't matter. You'll see the big arch sign that says water taxi. You'll get on there and you'll take a nice easy five, six minute ride. It'll look something like this. Once you get to downtown, you're going to walk two streets up or two streets to the right when you get there. You're going to come out, you'll be in kind of a back alley, the water's on your left. You're going to turn right, walk two streets up. When you're on that street, you're not going to look for a taxi. We're going to look for a bus. Now, if you're from one of the bigger countries like America or the UK or Russia, you know, you may be expecting a bus, which is what we're thinking of a large, maybe a double decker bus or a public transportation bus. That's not what these look like. A bus here could really mean any kind of van that you see driving around. That's not sketchy. You'll know it's really a bus because the license plate says bus like this and taxis will say taxi like this very easy to distinguish them and that's how you know they're legitimate now the main difference to tell a bus between a taxi other than the license plate is going to be the buses are going to have signs in the front they're going to tell you where they're going so you'll see a red and white sign saying Mayho Maho Beach and you basically hail it like you would hail a taxi you stand there raise your hand the bus will pull up and ask the driver before you get on board how much is the fare to go there? For us, when we just went last month, it was $2 a person. Taking a taxi ride from the port can cost you upwards of $30 and a taxi ride from downtown can cost you $20. Taxis and buses can look identical. There's really no reason you need to spend 10 times the amount of money to get there. The bus is just fine. Now when getting on the bus, it's just customary there and good manners to greet everybody on the bus. You can give them a simple good morning, good day, good afternoon. It's just the custom there. And then you close the door. They prefer you don't slam it. That's it. Now the bus ride to there is not a long ride. It takes about 30 minutes. It's 12 and a half kilometers or just under eight miles. Uh, definitely not walkable. But the good news is it's a very easy ride. We enjoyed it, got to see the scenic views of the mountainside, got to meet some locals and meet some nice people from the UK that we spoke with on the way there. Now, one thing you will notice is there are no bus stops as you'd expect. When you go somewhere and you wanna stop, you just say, stop for me please. And they'll stop the bus right there. They'll pull over and you can get off there. So if you see an interesting restaurant or maybe a store you wanna go into or maybe a bar you wanna check out, very easy to do. And then if you see a bus coming the other way, you can just raise your hand, they'll stop for you and you tell them where you're going and go back the other way. However, in this scenario, we're gonna to continue to Mayo Beach. So you just go all the way to the end of the route. Our bus driver dropped us off right 
on the corner of the airport and the beach in a nice roundabout with an easy crosswalk to get over to the beach. Very simple, very easy, no tricks. Six dollars and the three of us, my wife, my daughter and I, were already there. So you're at Mayho, now what? Well, you're gonna wanna get there early. Take that as a pro tip. There's only about 80, maybe 100 beach chairs and umbrellas there. And they're all right next to the Sunset Bar and you gotta rent those. If you're not there early enough to get one of those beach chairs or umbrellas, you'll be sitting on the sand or whatever you brought with you, which could be your beach towel, but then how are you gonna towel off? So get there early or bring something to sit on. Speaking of the bar, Sunset Bar is right there on the beach, just next to the umbrellas and the chairs. It is awesome. They have a beautiful bar area, a nice pool, nice hangout area, multiple food options for you, and that's where the closest restrooms are. Now the restrooms do cost $3 a person to use. However, they're gonna give you a voucher for $3 in drink credits. So if you wanna change and use the bathroom and all that, do that at one time and then get your voucher and then go get your drinks. Another cool feature of the bar is that instead of having a sports game on TV, they actually have the plane landing schedules, arrivals and takeoffs from the airport right there. So you can basically time it, hang out at the bar and say, oh, okay, there's a jumbo jet coming in in 30 minutes. I don't need to be out there waiting for it with my camera. I can enjoy this drink, I can go swimming, whatever, and I know I have this much time until it shows up which is really, really cool. The bar also has a live webcam, which is really neat. The webcam is motion activated as planes come in for a landing. So you can see yourself on the beach right there in St. Martin on their website and maybe screenshot it. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I did. Let's play Where's Waldo. See if you can find me in this picture. So if that seems neat to you, that's sunsetsxm.com. And I'm gonna put that right here at the bottom for you. Sunsetsxm.com. You can go to their site and see their video for free right now and see if there's planes landing or not. It refreshes every time a plane lands. Okay, you're there, you've had a drink, you're at the beach. Be smart. The beach is barely separated from the airport. It's only separated by a two lane road, a lane going each way. You know those videos you see of people holding onto the fence and the plane's uh, jet blast blowing them back? They're holding onto a fence right next to a road with no separation. I did see people get blown into the road. Luckily, it seems like when I was there, a lot of the locals are prepared for that and they tend to slow down or even stop when they see people holding onto that fence so they don't run them over. However, you may not be so lucky. We may have a distracted driver, somebody who's not a local, somebody watching the plane and not watching you, or watching the beach and not watching the plane. So be smart, be careful. The separation from the road to the beach is a curb that's probably 18 inches tall. That's it. Then you're on the beach. So if you're gonna stand on the beach and try to withstand the jet blast, be smart there too. That's where you see those videos of people getting blown into the water and hats flying away and umbrellas going every which way. It's all fun and dandy. My recommendation is, is that you wear glasses. You're basically standing in a sandstorm. So you don't wanna get a bunch of sand in your eye and need to go to a doctor on St. Martin. You're not gonna have time for that. So just put on some glasses, be smart, or maybe don't stand right behind a plane taking off. If standing in the jet blast doesn't sound like your idea of a good time, right on the guardrail at the beach and the airport fence. It's marked where the jet blast will be felt. It's very clear, so you can just move to the left or to the right of that and not have to worry about it, and you can just enjoy your time watching other people get blown away. A fun thing to do is stand underneath the planes as they're arriving. It's very easy to do. The earlier you're there, the more likely you'll get that perfect shot with nobody in front of you with the plane coming in. However, the bigger planes tend to come in later on in the day, from noon onward. Earlier in the day tends to be the smaller jets, so just take that into account. All right, you're ready to leave and head back. What now? To hail that bus, just walk back to where the last bus dropped you off, raise your hand, and they'll stop for you. 
This time you're just going to be looking for a bus that says Phillipsburg to go back to Phillipsburg. I recommend that you leave early. Plan ahead of time. The route back to the port is known to get congested and have traffic delays. Don't put yourself in a time crunch. Remember, you're doing this on your own, not through the ship's excursion that's paid for, so they're not gonna wait very long for you if you're late. Don't put yourself in that position and miss the ship. We left about two hours early and it was plenty of time. We got back a little bit longer than it took us to get there, maybe 45 minutes, but it was no big deal. And that included the bus stopping for a couple of people along the way. The bus driver asked if we wanted to go all the way to the port instead of using the water taxi. I asked him what the fare would be. He's like, I'm still gonna charge you the $2. So in this instance, we didn't need to use our round trip ticket on the way back because he was basically taking us where the water taxi would anyway for free. Once back at the port, it's essentially the length of a soccer pitch or a football field back to the ship on nice flat ground, very easy. So especially if somebody in your party has accessibility issues and they need a scooter or a wheelchair, it's no problem, it's very simple to get to and from where the water taxi is or where the bus or taxis are gonna drop you off. And that's it guys, that's the best way to do this. I just did this last month for three of us, including drinks and restroom breaks, everything all in, I was out of there in under $50. So if you're trying to go to Maho Beach, this is how you do it. Travel smarter, not harder.